In this morning's Breakfast Bible Bite, we'll be reading from Psalm 40 and verse 10 about Christ's witness through our lives. Psalm 40 and verse 10, I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great congregation. These prophetic words reveal Jesus as God's true messenger to all humanity. His loving kindness is not obscured or hidden in the heart of a believer, but like Christ, they should all be manifest in our outward actions. Although as church as we are in, 20, in the 21st century of America, the reality about our need for righteousness and truth is often hidden in manipulation, whether for power, profit, or just the fear of men. The righteousness that God's nature demands of his children is frequently concealed from many congregations. Many pastors, depending on their denominational understanding of original sin, are quick to speak about the evils that beset all uh, it beset us all at the fall of Adam. God's created in God's image. Adam was created good. And in the image of his creator, he was created body, soul, and spirit. Yet, along with Eve, they made a free will choice of choosing to know evil. Evil then made itself obvious when Adam's son killed, Cain, killed his brother Abel. The Bible tells us that Adam's next son, Seth, was born not in God's image. Rather, he was born in the image of his father, Adam, without the presence of God's Holy Spirit. By inheriting that propensity toward rebellion and evil without God's course-correcting spirit and by proxy through Adam's offspring, the twist towards sin was passed on to all humans. Being a person familiar with and possessing a certain love for sailing, Perhaps we can think of this lost nature in nautical terms of latitude and longitude. Latitude is where, the, where we are lost, and longitude is how long we have been lost. From a biblical perspective, the longitude of all human life has been condemned since the time of Adam. In my theological understanding, we begin our human life as lost, away from God, and our objective and that, through, that of our salvation is to find our way back to him through Christ's gift. Christ's spirit writes of this through Paul's pen in Romans 5.18. Yes, Adam's one sin brought condemnation upon everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness makes all people right in God's sight and gives them life. Paul asked a pertinent question in Romans 7.24. He writes, Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body of this death? And then he rhetorically answers his own question. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We, ha we, made, we, have, made a ch we have a choice to make. Let's put it that way. We have a choice to make. Uh, God's indwelling spirit made possible by Christ's sacrificial death can, transforming, can transform us, creating in us a new nature and the renewing of our mind. God's divine plan is creating a way of making unrighteous men righteous. And no surprise, our fallen nature was known to the Father from the beginning when he first created humanity with a free will. His Christ plainly taught the way to salvation, we read in John 15:26. Through his sacrifice, he would open a way for complete forgiveness, whereby his own spirit could again indwell humankind, bringing restoration to our malviolent minds and bringing them into an agreement with our new nature that is given to us when we are born anew. What all this means to you and I is that according to Jesus' word in John 3, 5 through 7, he says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I have said this. You must be born again. Have you been born again?